everyone, and welcome back to our Ellipse Unsealed podcast. Today we have a very special guest, Liz McLennan of TechFluent. Hi, Liz. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Do you want to having me on. Glad to be here. <laughs> yes. Do you want to start us off by kind of telling us a little bit about yourself and TechFluent? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so my name is Liz McLennan. I am the founder and executive director of TechFluent, uh, which is a nonprofit about two years old that focuses on helping underserved communities um, by doing tech training and mentorship and ultimately career services so that people can land jobs in tech. Uh, my background is in the Microsoft channel, specifically D365 and the Power Platform. So that is the focus of our curriculum and support right now because that is what I'm familiar with and I absolutely saw the need over my 13 years of working in a few different roles in the channel. Awesome. Yeah, I was just about to say you, you, you're not just with TechFluent, you've been in the you've been a, you've been in tech yourself for a long while. Um what brought you yep. to that? I I've, yep. I've, I've been in tech for 23 24 years now. I got a degree in IT, you know, back in the early 20 uh, 2000s. What brought you to tech? Like what was what 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 excited you or what brought you to the tech uh, field? Yeah, so I didn't go a traditional route. My undergraduate is in human resources. So you'll see the training and L and D connection there with what I'm doing now. Yeah. So I actually thought I wanted to be a full time trainer and that was my dream job. And I just couldn't find that in 2010 when I graduated from college. Um, and so yeah. I accidentally got into tech. It was never on my radar. I wasn't ever like thinking of a STEM career because I didn't view myself as good at math and at math and science. And I just thought that you had to be a programmer to be in tech. So it was completely accidental for me. I had no intention ever of being in tech. And I honestly don't really like doing the in the weeds technical stuff. Like I much prefer working with like the people and the development side of it. So obviously I've had to play more technical roles and have had periods of time where I'm very hands-on on projects in like doing configuration and customization work. But now I'm kind of more in my, my passion and dream job scenario where I get to blend the two and really you know focus more on the people side of things. Yeah, that's awesome that they came together like that. I, I moved to Colorado in 1999 with the idea of being an artist also had no you know thought of being a tech person i got to colorado and got a job in a company that had an art department and every artist said don't do it you're never going to make any money <laughs> change your mind and so I, <laughs> I i was waiting to get residency to get an in-state tuition and in that time period i don't know how i can't even remember how i settled on a career in it other than i like problem solving and i actually was pretty decent at math in high school it's probably the only subject i did well in uh consistently because I was just naturally good at it. So I, I just kind of ended up being in a, in the tech field. It's crazy how that happens. I feel like you hear all the time people be like, Problem solving is a really critical skill. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, but yeah, people who didn't have it on their radar or anything like that. Um, I, we work with one person who went to school for like music, I think, and he ended up in the tech world as well. Um, yeah. With that being said, Liz, how did you come about the idea of TechFluent? I know you said you liked to combine like the HR role with the tech role, but when did the idea really come about? Yeah, so I get asked this question a lot and I think it's hard for me to pinpoint because it's not like I woke up one morning and I was like, oh, I have TechFluent figured out and it's this cohesive idea and I'm going to march forward with this great like concise planned out thought. So I think it started to evolve and begin at the end of 2019. So I was the CE practice director at Stonehenge at the time um, and burning out, to be honest. So I just like flat out quit my job without a plan. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, I just need to change. And so I think I was starting to reflect on like, what makes me happy? What is fulfilling? What am I passionate about? And so at that time, it was kind of um, a very, you know, thought very beginning like empathy state of maybe I'll do a for-profit training company or be like something for-profit for training um and like I said I just quit and so I had a few months off I didn't even know if I was going to stay in the industry like really everything was on the table and my husband was really supportive which was awesome to have that time and I decided that I'll just be an independent consultant and for my own LLC for a while because contracting 
would give me the flexibility over my schedule and just kind of give me more options to pursue other things. Um, so I decided to do independent contracting at the end of February 2020. So I had lined up some in-person training work in Ohio in March, which definitely didn't happen because of the pandemic. So it got postponed until October and became virtual training. So there was basically no work to be had. And I had that whole winter, spring and summer off before I found contracting work at like the end of the summer, but just a lot of time to reflect. And I think Without that time, I probably would have been too busy and I probably wouldn't have like evolved it to the point of where it is today, like helping underserved communities that focus and it being a nonprofit. And then I think the other thing that really kind of shifted my mind was that I live in the Minneapolis, um, St. Paul area in the suburbs. And that spring is the spring that George Floyd was murdered. And so it just really brought inequality front and center to all of our minds because we were living through that and i was protesting with like black lives matter and so i think that re really kind of helped solidify the direction that i ended up going with tech fluent yeah that's it's crazy how those unexpected moments in life can really bring you to where you need to be you know you saying you quit your job and kind of laid everything out on the table and then once you kind of had it figured out of course the pandemic hit and then all these yep. other factors weighed in and yeah, sometimes those just bring the most beautiful opportunities if you if you can take them, I guess. Um, so that's awesome. yeah, you just got to go with it. You make a plan and then the plan doesn't happen and you just got to keep rolling with it. <laughs> Definitely. Wow, that's awesome. So I guess since you started TechFluent, what's been like your favorite part of it or about mentoring young technical minds? Just like what do you love most about it? It's kind of like a. So I will say that I don't get to. Yeah, I'm like, how do I answer this one? So I don't get, unfortunately, get to do the direct training and mentorship too much anymore because mm -hmm. I'm leading the program. And we had over 100 volunteers globally supporting 25 winners last year. So I had 25 mentors and 40 trainers. So I'm not in that day to day anymore. But I had been in the past um, early on and then in other roles. And so I think my favorite part about mentoring or training teaching someone is that kind of aha moment or that light bulb moment where it's like they've been struggling with this concept and you're working with them and then it's like oh everything just clicks you yeah. know and they're like <laughs> oh my gosh i get it now and like everything fits together because so so often like the platform is confusing and the industry is confusing and if you're coming in cold with no industry experience no tech experience like it's not like you go to one day of training and you're like yeah i'm comfortable i get this like there's a steep learning curve and it can take four six seven eight weeks a year sometimes for someone to like fully grasp all the concepts like i think back to when i used to teach people about relational databases and like the concept of relationships between tables and if you're teaching that to a non-tech person that can can be a really hard concept to grasp. And so I always got and have gotten enjoyment out of that, that aha moment of it finally clicking and being like, yeah, all pieces are fitting together and like, like they've got it. And it's something I have to reassure our learners all the time of time about of like, yeah, you might be confused, you might be overwhelmed, but that's completely normal. You're on week three, you're on week four, and it will come eventually. Just Stick with it. Keep trying. It's a normal process to be a little bit confused and overwhelmed at first. Yes, definitely. I would have to agree with that. Um, I just started with Ellipse Solutions about a year and a half ago, and this is my first time in the technical space. So you're definitely correct on the part where it can be a little tricky to catch on to things sometimes, or you can definitely ask my manager about that too, of, of teaching me as well. Um, but yeah, those aha moments are definitely crucial and great to see as well <laughs> as the teacher, for sure. Okay. I'm sure you're actually taking uh, some technical courses this year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Were you asking I'd love, me? I'd love. Yeah. Oops, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Savannah, you're taking. I think you're taking some technical courses to try to catch up on some of the the more like technical aspects of Dynamics 365, just to help. I mean, not that you're ever going to do anything with it, but just rounding out that knowledge is helpful. And uh, and yes. I'm back, by the way. I I, I knew I was going to have <laughs> issues. I disappeared. 
I'm coming to you live from like mile marker 41 on I-95 <laughs> in Richmond uh, at the rest stop here at, at Ashland, just outside of uh, what used to be King's Dominion. I think it's now like Six Flags or something. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, this this podcast seems to be a little We're spotty. To too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I keep cutting into Liz. I can't hear you sometimes. So I'm sorry if I keep yeah. talking over you. <laughs> but No worries. Um, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to yeah, say, I'd love to add kind of my biggest fulfilling like moment with tech blends. I know you had asked me about like mentoring people, which I don't get to do as much these days, but I really find a lot of fulfillment out of hearing the personal stories when someone's landed a job. So like TechFluent yeah. isn't just about the mentorship and the training. Like our ultimate goal is job placement because we know you're, you're both in the industry. Like Tech jobs are well benefited, they're flexible, they are lucrative, um, they have a ton of potential for like long term fulfilling work. And so it's really that job placement and hearing from people of, hey, I can support myself, I can support my family, I can send money back home to their home country because we have so many immigrants in our program. And if I can share just a personal story that someone texted with me um, about over the holidays is that we had a recent graduate. She just landed a CE um, functional consultant role at a partner in the beginning of December. Um, and it's her first Christmas she got to spend with her family because she wasn't working two jobs and working in a restaurant. So she got to spend the yeah. holidays with her family. And then she also gets to work fully from home, which is a big deal for her because she's a caregiver for her grandpa. And so it's just completely changed her life. And that's the stuff that is really impactful, really awesome to hear is that, that you know if this is a change for someone that you know puts them in a completely different direction and gives them the flexibility and balance that they need to to live their lives it's planted a social wealth seed as well i mean this is like it's gonna be impactful hopefully generations for her family going down the road i mean this is how it starts getting that mm -hmm. that, that that bit of wealth built up and that ability to save and, and create some some long-term foundation that's awesome man yeah that is yeah, yeah. so you any significant uh, problems like you know in going through this like what's what are some hurdles you 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 might have you know gone through in in setting this up running you know running a program like this yeah <laughs> I mean, all the normal stuff that comes with starting a business, right? So, I mean, startup, right? economy, right? Like, the job market's not been awesome in tech the last year. So, I think all of kind of the normal things. But I would say we have really lofty goals, and the to-do list is always huge and never-ending. So, probably my most constant struggle is prioritizing of, like, how to spend our time, how to spend my time, because we're not going to get it all done. Like, it'll never be done. And so, yeah. making sure that we're spending it on the best areas that will move us towards our organizational goals, which, which is impacting the most people. So, like, our big, hairy, audacious goal, which is, like, a 10-plus year goal, it's to place 1,000 people in jobs. And so it's kind of keeping that wow. front and center and making sure we focus on that whenever we're, you know, working on things and, and to move in that direction. But yeah, and then just yeah. finding balance and trying not to burn out because there is so much to do. But, you know, I've, I'm not, I don't have nonprofit experience. So like, it's been a learning curve for me. I'm learning, figuring out a new industry, um, volunteer engagement and volunteer management is a whole another thing like they're not being paid to help out like they're doing this right out of the goodwill of their heart and like it's their free time and so that's very different than managing a team of paid staff so all, that's all been stuff that's been new to me and i've had to figure out along the way yeah um i've done some of this management either through lord i was a, a I, I managed this is not, not nearly as impactful but i managed three carnivals a year for my kids uh middle school for like three years like that mid like sixth seventh eighth grade the school carnival and, and and somehow the pto passed it on to me like one time you volunteer and then you become the person <laughs> right once you do it well and so but man, like i said i'm managing like you must 30 have done a really good job then event. to get promoted <laughs> <laughs> uh it was rocky to start i'm gonna tell you a quick story you know you've heard of do you remember uh cakewalks right like in, and do you ever have a cakewalk where you walk around like a circle and they play music and you stop and, and if you're on the square you win a cake 
this is like an elementary school thing. Uh, no. And maybe maybe it's maybe it's gone the wayside. Maybe I started a trend and got rid of it. I don't know. But the problem was they were having these. Or it's a regional and also this, thing. <laughs> it could be a regional thing. And they were giving away cakes and two liter bottle of soda to these uh, middle school kids. And what was happening is they were leaving this event and, and like shaking up the bottles of soda and throwing them into the parking lot and and having no. cake wars in the parking lot. And it was a big. So the first thing I did was I got rid of the cakewalk and it was so controversial. I mean, you would have thought. I was like, you know, you know, you know, you know, I'd, I'd made some major, you know, political statement, but people <laughs> love the cake. I, I turned it into a gift card walk and it was so much better. The kids walked away with $5 gift cards to Starbucks. They could take them away. It was just a much better thing. But yeah, no, I, I totally understand the, the, the process around trying to vol like, you know, managing a volunteer is a, a really delicate thing. And, and you've got to, you know, and you're trying to keep mm -hmm. them on. You want to encourage them to stay with you because the time to, to manage new volunteers or get people up to speed, it can be, can be challenging. So that's, a, that's definitely a, a big, uh, big point. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you, I was to ask, and we didn't talk about it. Maybe you mentioned it before. How many, how many folks can you take in at a time? Like, is that, I assume you're trying to increase the number as you grow, you know, but how many, how many um, yeah. people can you take into the program at a time? So the last two years, we've enrolled 25 learners per year. Uh, we made a decision to quadruple our enrollment number. So for this year, our plan is to enroll up to 100. So a lot of growth, yeah. a lot of change. It's very exciting. That yeah, is exciting. that's huge. That'll get you that 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 1,000 number. Hopefully, you know, in your in your goals there, maybe even faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah we hope so. <laughs> we have some other fun things plan for this year too. some big changes that I can share. So another thing we're rolling out, we've historically always just been live virtual training using teams. Um, we are partnering with Elif Edom that has item by item, which is a mm -hmm. training company and, and they sell training, self-paced training materials to partners. So she's kindly donating some licenses to her platform so that we have a self-paced offering because obviously see oh, cool. not everyone's schedule or time zone can accommodate kind of our Monday, Wednesday, Friday structures. So that's something we're excited to offer as well as we're revamping our curriculum. So historically, we've just done about 200 hours of technical soft skill. So it's a mix, but um, it's been general. So we're producing generalists and we were covering all of Dynamics, FNOBCCE and the Power Platform, which MBI. It's just like, it was too much. Obviously, no one knows everything about all of the platform, all the products. And so we made the decision to offer one month of foundational training to kind of give the society an area of specialty. We will know right away which certs to advise them to pursue. So everyone gets at least one Microsoft certification. Mixing and managing like an FNO person with a CE person. So all the curriculum is still kind of being developed and underway. But as of right now, our plan is to have a CE and power platform track, a BI track, an FNO track, and a BC track. So we'll have approximately, you know, 20 to 25 individuals in each path. Oh, cool. Um, and to give you some kind of context of before and after, Last year, we offered two days of power, or power BI training. This year, we're offering 10 weeks of Power BI training. And so it's a yeah. substantial difference of the level of deep dive they're going to get in the area of specialty that they choose. Yeah. And they do, they do a capstone. They're doing real projects within this. So they're getting some experience because that's important, right, in, the, in getting that next level job. And, you know, again, I've, I've been in the IT field for a while as a, as a director. Yes, so I did they a are. So we... We are always looking for internships. We wish we had more of those, but yeah, yeah. So in lieu of, you know, real life project work, which we're always looking for, we do simulation projects. So there's an individual project and a team project where they're given a business scenario, um, high level business requirements, and they design, build, and demo a solution back to a panel of judges. Um, yeah. Um, on a project or on an internal team and kind of give them, you know, as close to a real life experience as we can of what it would be like to be in one of those roles, as well as 
the chance to practice presentation and, and demoing skills and things like that, which we see, you know, really helpful when it comes to interviews, because a lot of interviews in the final stages have things like presentations that are required. And we do record those. We post them on YouTube. So if anyone wants to check out those capstone projects, we have those up on our YouTube channel and we make them available so that our learners can show off all the hard work they did and kind of start building their personal brand and things like that. Cool. That's and we mentioned before, how how can somebody, I assume you're still looking for volunteers all the time. How, you know, what kind of volunteers are you looking for and how can they go about contacting you? Yeah, so we're always looking for volunteers. Um, there's kind of two different tiers. So one would be a leadership team volunteer. Um, we have a very hands-on tactical leadership team that meets bi-weekly and really takes part of the program and leads it. So there's tons of open leadership positions. Um, they're all available on our website. Um, so you can kind of view the role, the role description, and then it sends me a web form and I'll reach out to you if you apply. Uh, but our website is techfluentacademy.org forward slash volunteer. Um, and then we're always looking for mentors and trainers as well. Um, training, foundational training will start in June this year and mentorship and deep dive training will start in September. So we really haven't ramped up our volunteer recruitment yet because it's a little bit out, um, but it's you know not too early to apply. So if you're interested in applying right now, I totally welcome that. Just know that the onboarding might happen a month or two from now because we're not quite to that part of the process yet. But we're enrolling 100 learners this year, so we're going to need 100 mentors. And that's definitely, I yeah. think, where I'm going to need the most help because that is, um, that's where they exist for sure. <laughs> yeah. And do you have to, do you have to, to enroll more than more mentors than, than enrollees just in case somebody, you know, has to drop off or, you know, if you had that problem before? We've never had a mentor quit. Um, <laughs> don't so it's usually the opposite problem of the learner drops out and the mentor said that they don't get to mentor someone. Yeah. So gotcha. we do usually have a few extras. We also realize too, like, we don't know everyone and we don't know the learners yet. So it's a pretty random matching process. And we realize that sometimes people mm. just don't click personality wise, yeah. or maybe schedules don't align. And so we always want a bench of mentors too, just in case we need to reassign someone. Um, but I mean, we always have our trainers and our leadership team. So we already have a pretty deep bench anyways. And we've fortunately yeah. never run into that problem. I've also never had a trainer not show up to training. So I feel incredibly lucky that I have such a reliable team of volunteers. If they the that's mentors awesome. and trainers, if they say they're going to do something, they they definitely do, which is awesome. That's, yeah. that's great. I mean, it's such a great program. I, I'm and mentoring so glad is you're pretty, putting this out um, like, obtainable. It's... Thanks. Yeah. I was going to say mentoring is pretty easy because it's just two hours a week on average for the year, and it's at your own schedule. So, you know, the mentor and mentee think up, we share um, phone numbers and emails, and then it's really, they figure out how to meet and how to communicate. And then we have optional monthly mentor check-in meetings. So it's a pretty easy way to get involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty good system. And fingers crossed you don't have any mentors, you know, drop out like Bobby was asking about. <laughs> no jinxing. Um, but yeah, this all sounds great. And if Anyone listening wants to? Yeah, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll try to we'll try to add the link into the caption and go check it out. It's a great cause. Um, Bobby, did you have anything else that you kind no. of wanted to ask or include? No, I really appreciate Liz being on with us. I think this is a great program. I mean, if you've got the time, like I said, it's not a huge commitment. Um, at the end of the day, it's something you you know you know look to find the time if, if it's not here somewhere else in this world to promote folks who are trying to get into this to upskill because we need more people and we and we need to uplift these folks into into better careers um, where we can. So it's a, it's a great program and I really appreciate what they're doing. So happy to have Liz on. Yes, definitely. Yeah, thank you, Liz. Thanks we appreciate it so much. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys and to our listeners until next time.